uh, Robert. Um, this session is about hook uh, and up, uh, update hooks, post update hooks, especially and uh, hook update and available in core. Um, so uh, my name is Gibran Ijaz and. I am uh, a core developer. I have more than 300 commits created in Drupal 8, and I have I'm maintaining contact and shortcuts module in core, um, and I also maintain some uh, handful of uh, contrib modules. So I'm from uh, I, I work with previous Next, and previous uh, at previous Next we built large Drupal websites and uh, some. Some kind of similar flow, we've, we've kind of followed some kind of similar flow as my colleague discussed earlier uh, in, the, uh, in, uh, in the presentation. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, in depth about update hooks and post update hooks and the new functionality we have added, uh, why we need the post update hook in Drupal 8 and why update hooks are there for us. Um, first of all, let's discuss uh, what is an update system? Why we need an update system? Uh, we need an update system because we want to change, um, make changes to our configuration on the website. We want to change site name. In this particular example, we are removing uh, the system filter settings from uh, configuration factory. Then we want to make changes to the database tables. Uh, in this particular example, we are changing, uh, adding, or dropping the index uh, on a particular table. Uh, or maybe we want to update the content. Uh, so we can do that in post update hook. Uh, in this particular example, uh, we are copying the values from one table to another. And uh, why? Uh, and these are the changes. Uh, update system, uh, update hook, uh, hooks, and update system is there to make. Uh, uh, there to provide us API to make these changes. Let's discuss some uh, conventions about update hooks. So first of all, we all know these, this hook has been there forever, like hook update n. Uh, we put it in install file. Install file is the file which is, uh, you know, a st uh, which is loaded only on install or during the update process. Um, and that piece of code is only executed on demand whenever needed uh, during you know, either installation or update process. So uh, let's talk about the nomenclature of uh, the update hook. Um, in this particular update hook, we have N at the end, which represents, uh, which has a significant uh, you know, importance in this example because uh, N, the first digit of N represents the core version, the major version. If it's 7, it will, uh, if it's Drupal 7, it will be 7, and Drupal 8, it will be 8. And in Drupal 10, we will see how we will tackle this situation. Uh, but uh, for Drupal 8, all major versions for Drupal 8, it's 8. And the second digit, if you are writing an update hook for core, then uh, the second digit is the minor version of the release. If you are uh, using it in Contrib, then it's a major version of your Contrib module. Uh, there is a mismatch in that. Uh, the community is still working on figuring out the ways and step we, how we can improve this. Um, so let's hope uh, we'll have some uh, solution soon about this. Um, then last two digits are just the sequence numbers to make those uh, that possible that this sequence can be used uh, for once. Uh, so if we uh, and last but not the least, the functional documentation of the block of on the on top of update hook is used uh, to uh, you know identify the hook uh, name or uh, the things hook is doing going to do. Uh, so we are using that in Drush and uh, uh, the, the update hook UI, uh, 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 update UI. So if we look at meta-tag.install in Contrib, uh, this is the install file. As you can see, we have install hook here and the first hook update n is 8101 because it's uh, you know uh, one dot x version of meta tag it's compatible with drupal 8 and this is the first hook and they are changing some uh, field storage settings now let's deep, take a deep dive in the theory of update hooks um, so 
numeric part of the update hook, as we you know discussed in detail in previous uh, example, that uh, it is a schema version and it is stored in database and. And uh, that, that's why uh, you are not allowed to rename your update hooks once uh, the schema version is changed. It's changed forever. You cannot go back to previous schema uh, until unless you uh, write some script uh, to revert those changes. But uh, we can only go forward. And maybe in next, the next update hook, you can revert previous update hook changes. So uh, because it's a sequence number, they are, they come, they are executed in sorted order. And uh, they, they, the update hooks all are executed in batch processes and can uh, use batch processing as well. Um, last thing which is very important that the order of update hooks can be changed. Uh, the execution of update hook order is, can, uh, can be changed. And for that, we use hooked update dependencies. So for this particular case, uh, as you can see on the left, we have uh, hook update, uh, we want to execute update hooks in particular order that test module two wants to execute 8001, and then test, uh, we want to execute uh, test module three, uh, 801, and then 802, uh, and so on and so forth. So what we are doing here essentially in the hook update dependencies, uh, as you can see uh, the, uh, on the right side, for in test module three, we are adding a dependency on test module 2801 hook. And similarly, on, uh, in test module 2, we are adding 802 dependency on 801. So when the update system will sort the order of execution of hooks, uh, th th this is go going to be you know, calculated using these hook dependencies. And then we can go and make our changes uh, and making sure that our sorting order is correct. Similarly, uh, this is very important for contrib modules because sometimes we uh, write after some core uh, updates we want to execute our uh, uh, update, and if uh, there is if there is no way to do that, then there will be you know uh, no way to make changes uh, in right order and correct format. So this is very important API thing. So. Let's talk about some do's and don'ts of update hooks, some things we should and shouldn't do in update hooks. So, uh, something like invalidating the cache we should do uh, in update hooks. We shouldn't clear the cache because cache tables can be, uh, you know, uh, change. We can change the structure of caching. We may be adding a new cache table or removing some cache table. So, uh, so always invalidate the cache because uh, if you invalidate the cache at the end of the execution of uh, all the update hooks, we will clear the cache, and that would be it. Um, similarly, if you want to uh, use, uh, 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 if you want to change the configuration on the website, just use the config factory editable uh, command uh, as listed here, uh, because we don't want to make uh, changes directly to schema. We want to make sure that we make changes on config objects, and we are not um, making changes uh, directly uh, without uh, any uh, validation of the uh, 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 without any getter or setter or factory method. Similarly, if you want to read uh, and just want to uh, process those values, you can just uh, use config uh, of function directly. Um, another thing which is very important during the update hooks, we still use container, dependency section container. So that it is a minimal uh, container, but it is still very helpful and useful. So do not rebuild your container during any post update hook. Always mark it for the rebuilding so that once the hook execution is finished, the container should be rebuilt properly. And similarly, uh, entity schema depends heavily on configuration in core and uh, container services. So you cannot uh, update the entity schema as well without uh, uh, you know, uh, making sure. Uh, you, 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 can, uh, you have to make sure that th these things are there and you can update entity schema as well. So some don'ts. Uh, as, as, as discussed earlier, that cache table can be worked on. Uh, we should add the structure can be changed in the update hooks. So never assume any DB table schema 
uh, always add check and balances around that uh, and make sure that specific column and with the specific property is there. Uh, there is proper API in core uh, to use all this function, so use that. Similarly, configuration schema is another thing. Um, you can add, update the existing structure. You can remove the uh, config schema uh, keys from uh, the, the config structure. So never assume the uh, config schema structure there as well. Uh, and similarly, it's true for entity updates, uh, entity tables as well, because they are using uh, database table and configuration, uh, field configuration. Uh, so you can, cannot do with entity tables as well. Uh, the most important thing here is that if you are uh, you want to process entities, you uh, cannot do that in update hooks. You can't create or load or update or delete ent any entity, uh, whether it's content entity or config entity. Uh, for config entity, you have to use config factory methods. But for content, uh, you, if you have to cha make the changes directly, make to the table. But uh, if you still have to make uh, use entity API, then use post update hook, and we'll discuss that in uh, later slides. Um, and update hooks, uh, our update system is still using the routing system, so you cannot rebuild the routes uh, as well during um, you know uh, update hooks. So you have to uh, rebuild those. Uh, the mark for the rebuild. Uh, uh, there is a flag in routing system. You can ma uh, uh, make that true, and they they can be rebuilt afterwards. Let's discuss the new system, uh, the post update hook, and why did we need that. So post update hook underscore name is the convention here. And uh, we removed the N and, and replace it with the name, uh, because N, uh, N doesn't hold any significance in post update hooks. Um, N can be anything. Uh, it, it, it's, it can be any machine name. Uh, maybe a description uh, of the function, what you are doing, will be a uh, you know, better name uh, for the post update hook. Uh, then uh, in the execution order, we uh, execute post update hooks. Uh, we execute update hooks first, and then we execute post update hooks. Um, and the main focus of, of post update hook is that we are allowed to use any APIs we are allowed to use any uh, uh, you know, uh, entity APIs, config APIs, uh, or any other APIs available from core. So uh, that's why we wanted to have a different set of hook, uh, update hooks for, uh, for this process only. And to distinguish between uh, hook update N and post update uh, hooks, uh, we store them in a separate file, uh, just not to you know, just to keep them uh, separately from the code base. And it, it, and nevertheless, it's uh, it is also loaded on demand uh, as install file is loaded on demand. And um, as you know, that update update hooks are uh, executed in batch and can process batch. And similarly, post update hook can do the same thing. Um, and as, we, uh, as I described earlier, that uh, hook update and are uh, you know executed in sorted order, uh, but these are uh, executed in top-down order. So first hook will uh, so the hook appears in the f in first uh, in the file will be executed first, and then the later one, and then, then after that. But it, as as we know that hook update and are only executed once in their lifetime, and then once the schema is changed, we cannot uh, use their update hook. Similarly is the case with post update hook. And if you make a change, so this question uh, you know, comes to me all the time. If, like what if I make a change in post update hook uh, and paste my new post update hook uh, above a previous hook? That, will be still, that still will be executed because uh, the update hook, the system has, uh, update system has no record of that post, post update hook before this uh, execution. So uh, even if it is, on top of a previous hook, uh, it will still be executed, uh, at, but they will still be executed in so, uh, you know top-down order. So if you are uh, um, you know like I'm creating nodes and editing nodes and I'm changing the node URLs uh, in three uh, in this order, there are three update hooks. Um, then 
uh, you have to make sure that they will, uh, so the first will be the created hook, and uh, the second will be the edit uh, uh, content, and third will be the node URL. So here uh, is the basic, let's discuss some the basic dif uh, differentiation between uh, update hooks. So this is a, a, an update hook from core. Uh, this is actually in block and dot install file. Uh, in this hook, um, there's some code hidden uh, in this example as well. As you can see, we are changing some block visibilities, and then we are saving the configuration. You can do that in update hooks, uh, because we are directly operating on the config, and we are changing the config values. So it is recommended to re directly read from the factory and uh, make those changes. Similarly, if you are updating the schema of the table, uh, in this case, we are uh, changing uh, the uh, field type, uh, column type in a database table from uh, int to tiny int. Uh, so you can do that in update hook, and it's uh, listed that it's a node update hook. So now, <laughs> What is the use of post update hook? As you can see in this uh, particular example, uh, we are using uh, a, a factory storage and we are loading a view from fa factory and uh, we are saving it to the config. So the idea here is that uh, you can create an entity and similarly you can create content uh, and move it to active storage of the website uh, and uh, uh, from the file storage of the website. Similarly, you can update content as well. This is a contrib example. Uh, this is a, there is a file browser module, and in that uh, we import some config during installation by, and say uh, and uh, add some uh, images as well. Uh, but uh, there is no UUID for the image. So in this case, in specific scenario, we are loading uh, the file from file URI and say, uh, updating the field UUID in the config. Another example here is that uh, for, of post update hook where we are changing the configuration, but we are using the configuration API uh, for that, uh, which is, in, in, in this specific case, we are loading all the field storage configuration, and we are relying on entity uh, uh, API to s uh, save and make the appropriate changes and remove all the redundant keys uh, there may be, or the, their values. Uh, and this is you know, the strong strength of uh, post-update hook that you have, don't have to make any other change and just re-save all the values. Uh, and the uh, entity API will you know, uh, take care of that. If you are uh, doing any communication between uh, two update hooks, uh, like you leave a message if you are in core, if you are a core developer and you are writing a core update hook and you want to leave a message uh, that I have changed such and such blocks. And if contrib want to act on those, they can do that uh, uh, by reading the specific key you updated in your update hook. Uh, in this case, uh, it, we are using the Drupal state key value uh, in the factory uh, to store some values that we have executed this hook and and you can you know, now execute your stuff and make changes, uh, whatever changes you want to make right now. Um, this is a key value pair uh, st uh, store, so most probably you will never be touching it or core will never be touching it uh, again. Um, so it is safe to store strings there. It's safe to retrieve data from there. Uh, even update, uh, who, uh, update system heavily rely on state, state key value pair to store information there. If you are making any um, entity related changes, if you are updating their definitions, if you are updating uh, the, the uh, maybe you are adding a new base field or you uh, are making a changes to a uh, you know node title and uh, making the title uh, label different. So these are the base field changes you can uh, do, and you can always uh, rely on entity uh, update manage, uh, definition update manager, which is uh, built for that specific pur purpose only. And core heavily relies on that. Uh, there is proper testing uh, uh, tests around that. 
so that all, uh, each and every case is properly tested and it will fulfill all the requirements for developers uh, they, uh, uh, so that they can make changes easily without any problem. Another thing which is very important uh, that always test your upgrade path. Uh, in core, we have so many upgrade path tests uh, and we recently converted them to functional uh, test base. Uh, and this is a really simple example in core. And I think all the test uh, hooks, uh, upgrade, upgrade part test uh, look the way, uh, look the same, uh, like this example. Uh, as you can see, we are loading a file from core uh, from the name suggested, like it's a bare standard installation of Drupal. Uh, there are a couple of other files as well with content. Uh, with configurations. So you can load this file, and then uh, all you have to do is, in your test method, uh, use uh, the test uh, run update method, and you can run your update hook uh, through the UI, all the process of you know, uh, update. Dot, uh, all the steps you follow from update. Dot, uh, uh, dot PHP. And after running those, if, that is, they, they, if they pass, all the steps are clear, there is no execution error, there is no runtime error, there is no schema problem, uh, then you can check and verify the things you have changed in the update hooks are still there. So this particular example is for post-update hook. Uh, this, test, uh, this test is actually testing the post-update hook execution, but we can also test update hooks as well. Uh, during this, uh, in the same test sy testing sy system. So this is the actual test uh, in which we are using, uh, the st uh, making the changes, and we are testing there. Uh, as you can see that we are loading all the views, and uh, we are changing the display cacheability settings, uh, and uh, we are unsetting the cacheability metadata, and making sure that uh, after saving every value, uh, in the uh, 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 using entity API will be uh, you know changed uh, 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 the way we wanted to. And if you look at this, uh, we have assert false where we are making sure that cacheable key is not there anymore uh, in the display uh, cacheability metadata, and there are more new context and max age keys are available for you. We have uh, several bugs around update system, and we need a lot of help. If you want to learn about update uh, hooks and update system, you want to improve your uh, knowledge base, uh, go jump in the queue and help, uh, help out. Um, you can also go to the sprints and ask for help. Uh, you can jump in IRC. Uh, so please, please feel free. And uh, if you have any question, please go ahead. Any questions? That's it. Thank you.